Divine Truth Spirit Experiences Discussion Experiences of people who have lived on earth and who have now passed into the spirit world. The title of the second part of this personal experience from Spirit's discussion is Sebastian and the Seven Sphere Transition, during which Mary channels Sebastian, an atheist spirit who previously spoke to Jesus a few weeks prior, asking questions about forgiveness and repentance, but who now has made the shift from being self-reliant to being God-reliant, and Sebastian shares his personal experience of the Seven Sphere Transition. The session was recorded on the 6th of June 2018 from 2.15 p.m. in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. Yeah, I think it's good to talk to people as they make these transitions because it's a lot, usually after you've made them, you sort of, you know, you sometimes forget yeah. what you were going through. Yes. <laughs> Do you yeah. know what I mean? So, yeah. it's, so it's wonderful that we get the opportunity to talk to you sort of as you're going through it because mm. it's, from our point, from our time, it's only two weeks ago, isn't it? Uh, or I think it's two weeks ago, or is it four? I think. Well, I don't know. I, I think it's four. I, I think, think it's perhaps four. four. Yeah, four weeks ago. So, so it's not that long from our perspective mm. in terms of what you know, in terms of time. But um, obviously, for you, there's so much that's happened yes. in those four weeks that that it would be, you know, it, it would take you the next. 50 years uh, at this speed to yes, describe to describe it. it <laughs> what's going on yeah and every mm, every change that i might describe to you that sounds small it feels so significant yeah now. massive massive yes. yeah, yeah massive changes because mm. uh, obviously too going coming from a point of view of having like as you say, a very suppressed emotional condition, really, in mm. comparison to this new state. Mm. Obviously, that's a major, major, tra and, and in fact, obviously, would at times feel traumatic almost. Yes. Major change. And, and this whole sensitivity to emotion, mm. which, which obviously the progression to the sixth fear on the natural love path sort of almost in some ways uh disagrees with doesn't it it's, it's, yes. There's certain, yeah. There's... yes it almost suppresses it yes. depending on how you make that journey but yeah um yes it's, it's a difficult thing to describe i find because mm. it it's not to say that i was emotionless of course it was not. just mm. to say that there was um <laughs> If there was no depth to my emotion is how it feels now yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and and i and, and, and the, the mind was somehow controlling the emotional experience so strongly that yeah. it felt that the emotions were subservient to, to the, the mind. mind yeah and almost created by the mind yes yeah yeah yes many times many of us said that yeah yeah i, I met and mm. And uh, I suppose what I'm trying to illustrate to to our listeners is how every like the the true emotional transition is also another sort of almost psychological disturbance that a person needs to go through, isn't mm -hmm. it? And you can see that for the majority of people on earth, obviously there's a tremendous amount of uh, terror and fear mm -hmm. about making that transition mm -hmm. um, into full emotional connection. Uh, there is, there is, but I would say also that uh, well, firstly, it's not as bad. <laughs> it's not as bad as what they think it's going to be. That's right. <laughs> and second, yeah. do it with the father. If you can yeah. do it with your father, then. Uh, It's like a homecoming that yeah. that you didn't really know that you needed to make. Yeah. <laughs> you, 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 did, you never had be, have been to that home before. As in, I mean, it almost feels like my relationship with God now is like a ho I've come home. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but I didn't know that that home existed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, yeah. I didn't know I left it. But now that now that that relationship is is there, I feel it's it's like a homecoming. Yes, uh, uh, the best way I can sometimes liken it to with people on Earth is 
to sort of imagine that you believe yourself to be a pauper mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden learn that you're the son of a king, you know, mm -hmm. and, and the difference between those two sort of states, un mm -hmm. understanding the difference between those two states emotionally. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's very hard to describe, isn't it, emotionally, mm. what those transitions are, particularly, you know, when we're trying to use a whole heap of words that don't really do the description justice. No, it is, it is very difficult. Mm. Mm. Um, and I think that the... The experience of myself now, emotionally, in a way that I couldn't conceive of before this it's really good mm, mm. and while people are terrified of it there's there's nothing to fear mm. Yeah. Mm. And I, and I, I, and that's commonly the state with love, isn't it? The, mm. Like we fear love a lot of the times, but and fear its possible consequences. But really, there's nothing to fear with, mm. particularly with God's love, of course. Yes. Yeah, I, I was wondering, uh, sort of changing the subject matter a little. In the sixth fear, were, were there people you looked up to that you sort of honoured or respected um, when you were living there, as people that you should listen to? Well, no. <laughs> I, for myself, I, I have to say, I, I respected a great deal of people there mm -hmm. and we had great many wonderful discussions and I did learn from others there. Mm -hmm. But um, because of this very strong self-reliant streak within me mm -hmm. uh, and issues with my own father and a feeling that to worship or look up to a person was to diminish myself. Mm -hmm. I was never one to to be in that kind of a state. Mm. So, so you know, on earth, a common feeling is to, that people find a person they can sort of admire or respect and then they listen to that particular person. Mm -hmm. By the time you've reached the sixth fear, you're sort of like, well, who is there left to admire <laughs> or respect? <laughs> well, I you respect res everybody. But I respected everyone yeah. and I admired many great things yeah. about them, but, but I not. was no longer... Um, involved as i said i didn't want to feel diminished in any way yeah. and and i yeah. also was i was well aware of the of the competency <laughs> that i felt that i had that you, know? you had yeah, yeah. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> so now that you're in the seventh sphere has that changed a bit too yes mm, what have you found there just a, such wonderful immense friendships yeah with people who i respect and admire Okay. And so much assistance coming to me all of the time. Mm. And people, uh, when I become overwhelmed, people who I look up to and I know that I want to learn things from, taking me to other spheres and other places to help me learn lessons. And mm. there is such a kinship here. There's mm. such a kinship mm. here, a, a sense of family that, and, and also... Uh, I have a deep regard and I seek out others to ask their assistance. Mm. Uh, and I, there are people who I meet who I, I no longer feel like I'm diminishing myself to, to look up to them, to mm. aspire to be like them. And mm. um, so in the, in the it's incredible. It, it, it shows me what distance I kept from others as well yeah. through my yeah. old beliefs. Yeah, in the sixth fear, it's like, uh, isn't it how, because you're so self-reliant, you believe that the best thing you can do is sort of listen to yourself and respond to your own, like, intellectual reasonings and so forth. Your own exploration, yeah. your own endeavours. And it's almost like you, you, you preclude people from assisting you in that mm. state, don't you? It's mm. like a, it's a, it's a very self-reliant, self-resilient uh, almost state where you're, you know. Well, yes, and I think this is another aspect to learning that, mm -hmm. that um, so it's not to say that prior to the sixth sphere and even within the sixth sphere that I didn't seek out others who I could see had attained something that I wished that you to wanted. attain. Yeah. 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 So in that way, I did look up to them or learn from, from them, them. Yeah. and seek to learn from them. Yeah. But 
it's a very different thing that I'm now engaged in mm. because there was always, as you said, this self-reliance in my previous path, in my previous progression, and always a sense that I must master myself for myself and I must master skills for myself and I must master knowledge and progress for and with and by myself. Mm. And, and now... Um, There's a way of learning with the heart <laughs> when the heart is open and emotional mm. and connected and unafraid to, 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 to and learn ask. and mm. explore and to seek mm. from a, knowledge from another person mm. and from God and from the environment. But there's a way that my learning and my aspiration has changed that's involves my changes in my heart and my emotions mm. that wasn't present in that prior learning and so now i see how limited that learning was mm. so when i was in the sixth sphere i would have viewed my current state as i was diminishing myself that i was lessening myself in in my own and others eyes and that i deserved less respect mm -hmm. And now I see it as an open-hearted, childlike seeking that why wouldn't everyone do it. do it this way? Because the yeah. learning is more rapid. The learning is more complete. I feel it's less complicated, the learning is so much less complicated. Simple. There's much less effort. Yeah. And, and I experience so much more joy from the learning. Yeah. Yeah. So I, oh, I wish I could tell everyone on earth open your heart to yeah. learning yeah, yeah. and forget the forget the idea of worrying about what everybody being else thinks about associated you with status and, <laughs> exactly. and and that your that your worth as a as a person is your is somehow associated with your uh, ability to to be self-reliant because mm. it is so much not the truth and mm. it prevents so much joy yeah, mm -hmm. and I wanted to sort of contrast relationships a little bit, if I could, uh, mm -hmm. as well, because in, in the sixth sphere, the uh, your feelings are in are in sort of general relationships with people, while at the time you would have thought you had brotherly affection for them. Mm -hmm. When you look back on it now, what do you think about what you had with them? <laughs> well, I, I think I would still call it brotherly affection, yeah. but no connection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there was no heart. Yeah. There was no, uh, and I keep saying the word heart because I think it's something that your listeners perhaps will um, and was it driven by a desire for their personality or was it driven by a desire for the information it, or, or, the, or the, joint, the joint effort? Or I, I have to say that in the sixth sphere, there was no real respect for the personality. There was mm. no real love of a person's personality. Mm. The uniqueness and the individuality of each person mm. was not honoured, respected, desired, enjoyed. Mm. There was just so much emphasis on attaining a perfected love, mm -hmm. if that makes sense, mm -hmm. and being a perfect reflection of that love mm -hmm. and reflecting that to each other and to, to um, enjoy or to experience through the expression of intellectual endeavours that were the camaraderie of joint endeavor yeah concurrent yeah. with that yeah. sort of brotherly or sisterly perfection in love mm. and so there was um and certainly that was the case for myself and and that's why i just felt companionship was the i i didn't have any of a sexual longing mm. or a, or a deep desire for closeness i wasn't averse to people and and those, uh, that group that I was with when we met, mm -hmm. I consider those men my friends mm -hmm. and um, it, I feel I love them so much more now. Yeah, but yeah. I, I did love them mm -hmm. and feel a closeness with them, mm -hmm. but it is nothing compared to now there is such a joy. There's a joy to be found in 
in the uniqueness of of an individual Mm -hmm. and it's not about the expression of their love Mm -hmm. it's about the expression of themselves their personality or their nature isn't it and it's so (laughs) difficult to i i I think if i was talking to myself (laughs) now when i was in the sixth sphere and trying to convey this so the seventh sphere sebastian talking to the sixth sphere sebastian (laughs) i would find it so difficult to explain the difference to to my sixth sphere self because Mm -hmm. i really had no concept of this the beauty of the individual and mm. the joy that could be found in having an emotional connection with an individual. Mm. And now when I visit the other spheres, there are people who are far less perfected in natural love than I was just a short time ago. And certainly some not even in connection with the father, but I feel this joy mm-hmm. because I feel them more now. Yeah. I feel all of them more now. Yeah. And I start to see their individuality shine out of them yeah. and i can sense what is what god put into put into them what god created them as you mm-hmm. know their, yeah. their nature and it, it's just joyful yeah. it's just yeah. joyful to to see that in people and to enjoy people for for their uniqueness yeah so you know to my mind it's sort of like it's sort of like comparing um, a principled sort of position of love mm. with a passionate pr- position of love, isn't and, it? And personal. And position personal, of love. Yeah. yeah. And it's sort of well, it's like seeing the person for what they are, but not really feeling a passion or, or desire to get to know their nature and their personality. Mm. And then in the seventh sphere, you sort of really want to get to know their nature and personality and you recognize the nature and personality like you say of people or in every sphere right the way into the hells you can mm-hmm. see sparks of their nature and personality you feel really attracted to that you know yes yeah. it, it it feels to me now that my life in the sixth sphere was very self-focused mm-hmm. i was so i was so I saw the what I called the moral importance of loving others. Yes. But I was so engrossed in and and up until up until the point of where I was in the sixth sphere even before then I was so engrossed in trying to perfect that love within myself mm-hmm. that I I really wasn't considering other people very much. Mm. Um, Which is an uh, irony, isn't it? it You're is. sort of growing in love, so-called of others. To love others. To love others and ethics and treatment of others and so forth, and yet we're really not that concerned about others. <laughs> no, and not connected to them and not paying yeah. that much attention to them. And, mm. and now I feel um, humbled in so many ways. I feel like... I feel I'm this new person mm. um, and I'm still coming to terms with how Ariana fits into that <laughs> um, yeah. and, and uh, who I really am, I suppose. Mm. Um, and I'm so aware that I am far more loving, but also that I am so much to perfect in myself in love as well. Mm. And, and yet, it doesn't preoccupy me because I have fa- faith, trust, mm. mm-hmm. belief mm. that I can do that and mm. I can do that with God mm-hmm. and I can do that if I express myself and express my love through the expression of myself but also my love for others and if I receive from others who they are and and am open to receiving love from them, my whole quality of life has changed. Mm-hmm. And also I just know that I'll get there mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and make that just gl- glor- glorious, it seems, transition that yeah. that I never thought would be possible. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yes, it's, it's incredible the change in relationships and, and the change in my perception of, not only myself, but of others, mm. and my conception of self mm. and conception of others. Mm. And it, it seems like a dry and wasted existence. <laughs> I know it wasn't, but yeah, it yeah. seems, <laughs> by contrast, a dry and wasted ex- existence attempting uh, to rely on myself to perfect this love of others, to live in my mind, to analyze. Um, I mean, I, I just. 
it just seems like a a waste of time now when mm. compared to to what I now know is possible. Yeah. And your own physical capacities now, how how would you compare those with your six sphere capacities? <laughs> well, I think I said um, to you already, I feel as if I have new senses. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure that I actually do or if I'm just inhabiting the senses that I already had so much more because I am experiencing myself so much more. No, there's definitely new senses. <laughs> right. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah, so yeah. I, I'm still learning so yeah, much. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I feel that this emotion, this connection to love, mm -hmm. so connection first to God's love, mm -hmm. which just opened me to connection to so much of myself yeah. and my own deepened my capacity for feeling and emotion mm. and it made me feel that I could feel other people in a very new way. Mm -hmm. um, I could see things so visually, I suppose you would say it. Uh, visually, it seemed that I could see new colours mm -hmm. and new there was a new quality to everything, similar to how I was describing the difference in my home. Yes. It feels as if I can sense things in the air, mm -hmm. if that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, and that's definitely the case. I sense energy, I sense emotion all around me, imbued in everything. Mm. And I sense it in people and I see it reflected in colour and it, but the, the reason I say I don't know if these are new senses or if just I'm more, I'm utilising the senses I had in the sixth sphere is that in some ways in the sixth sphere, I felt quite attuned to what the environment was telling me, <laughs> um, but it wasn't emotional. Yeah. It, I, could, I could extrapolate emotions, mm -hmm. but it wasn't, I wasn't experiencing it emotionally. Mm. And the speed of reasoning now? in comparison to the speed of reasoning in the sixth? Yeah, well, again, I just thought it's because in the sixth, I was using my mind to analyse everything. Mm. And now I feel like my mind's assisting, but but it, it, I'm reasoning in a different way. Mm -hmm. It's like half of the reasoning I did is completely unnecessary <laughs> and just like a waste of time and also reach the wrong conclusions circuitry yes <laughs> but even even I, it seems i understand things um yes yeah, so like like i suppose wrong conclusions because mm. i understand things in a way that's simultaneously simpler but also deeper mm -hmm. if that makes mm -hmm. sense i have a deeper <laughs> knowledge as in i understand things um, so if, if by comparison in the sixth sphere, I understood things to this level uh, in terms of the way that they operated mm -hmm. and the way that things happened and cause and effect or, or the, the reason for a phenomenon mm -hmm. uh, or, or a, the way a, a process occurred, mm -hmm. if I understood it to that level in the sixth sphere, now I seem to understand it I understand far more about it and why and mm. how and mm. what and what cause, cause and effect and all kinds of things. So it's deeper, mm -hmm. but it's simpler at the same time. Yes. Yeah. There's less, there's less components. And there's <laughs> less energy required to r arrive at the conclusion. Less energy well. on my part. Mm. And it seems there's, there's less complexity in everything. <laughs> yeah. Uh, everything looks more simple than... What the reasons it was. for things are more yeah. simple. The way things operate is far more simple. Yeah. And yet uh, those things, it doesn't mean that those things that I analysed before don't exist. No. It's just not the core or the, the, or the real, real root, root reason. of mm. why things are happening or how things are happening. Mm. That it's more like effects, I suppose, mm. of things and that you can interact and interface with those things and, and come have have smooth interactions or have some understanding of those things from a six fear perspective, but it's nothing compared to how, th yeah. how things, I understand things now. But I thought that was something to do with somehow, 
uh, I guess that's a new sense, is it? Like, yeah, uh, it's yeah. a way of understanding things. I thought that God was helping me to understand things a lot. Well, well God does, time. but also yeah. the soul's development is such that it now can absorb different start types of information that you mm. couldn't absorb before. So, mm. so, so now, you, it's not that I was capable of doing it in the sixth sphere, no. but resisting, u- using my mind to block it. I was incapable. You're then. incapable, yeah. I see. Mm. And, so I'm and, more capable now. And you, you become more capable of absorbing information that's actually available in the sixth sphere. Because you're heavily using your intellect, you've you've dumbed down really this sensation of the soul, which is you know so so you really detune from the way the soul learns, mm. and as a result of that, the, the the stuff the soul can learn cannot be learnt because you've 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 detuned away from the way it learns, mm. and and when you receive some of God's love, it's a it's a, like a like putting 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 into you this sort of feeling of oh this is the way to learn now mm. and this way to learn is completely different than the way I used to learn and this way to learn also <clears throat> opens me up to all of this uh, truth that can only be learned that way mm. Mm. in no other way mm. Mm. yes uh, uh, yeah I wouldn't have described it like that but mm. yes mm. and uh, probably just. Uh, before you have to leave, mm. um, it, in the sixth sphere, you obviously over five hundred years had the uh, chance to sort of study the universe to a degree. Yes. So, so what were your theories about the universe when you were in the sixth sphere? Like people on what Earth have mean? read things like the Urantia book and stuff like that, which are, and and other teachings like that that sort of a channeled material from mm. spirits who claim they know about you know how the universe works uh, yeah so i suppose um i suppose my view in the sixth sphere uh well I, I don't know if i'd call it simplistic but i saw that there was a simplicity i suppose mm-hmm. in in one regard in that in the regard that there seemed to be order uh that was being um I could see a pattern of order Mm -hmm. throughout the way things work. Throughout the spheres and so forth and the structure of them. And the structure. Up until the sixth. Up until the sixth. Um, Because, as you know, I was very dubious about anything existing beyond that. that. Mm. And and that's where my my reasoning about infinity was not very logical mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but I could see an order in the way that things work and I could see that this progress in love although it seems silly to say that now because I now understand mm. it to be something so different but mm. the progress that I had made mm-hmm. it, it, that path I felt that every that was ahead of every person mm-hmm. and I could see that anyone that I encountered at any time when they learnt a lesson of love they, they, their situation and environment changed. Yeah, and and I had the feeling that everything in the universe was there to bring about the, that learning. Mm-hmm. Um, I ha- I I thought that that was really um, the working of natural law that all things should reach uh, an equilibrium and also reach a, a, a functioning state. Mm-hmm. And that everything was operating to bring everyone and everything into a very well functioning state. Mm-hmm. And which was, in your opinion, the six fear state. Was the six fear state. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and I thought that perhaps there would be some extension of the six fear state, but I I was certain that it would any progress would occur or any expansion of the sixth sphere would occur in the same way that I had progressed thus far. Right. So did, did you feel that there might have been a seventh sphere, but it has obtained the same way as the sixth sphere was obtained? Yes, yes, I did. Yeah. But I thought it was, it's probably more accurate to say that I thought that we could expand the sixth, the sixth sphere. sphere. Yes, that's what I was thinking that yes. you felt. Because yes. it, it feels to me that you almost believed the sixth sphere to be infinite. Yes, yes, to to be the ultimate and the infinite, but yeah. but I because of um, because of my ideas about infinity, I felt that look, 
we must be able to expand this sphere that we're in mm -hmm. through some endeavours and mm -hmm. we must all keep endeavouring yeah. <laughs> to do different things and have experiments. But we could never break some of what I felt were like foundational rules, principles, principles that yeah. all related to a climate of natural love mm -hmm. and, and it, attainment of a perfected state. And it, just prior to our speaking, I had come, I had previously really thought that I had achieved, you know. The pinnacle. The pinnacle. <laughs> but I had come to reason, look, I, there's obviously more that I need to learn. Yeah. But I certainly hadn't considered anything really that you exposed into, you know, I wasn't open to the truth really mm. about mm. the universe. Mm -hmm. I just thought that there must be some other extensions. Yeah. And did you explore the boundaries of the sixth dimension or the six uh, at times yeah, yeah I, some and yeah. did you find limits to the boundaries yeah well i found i was limited yes yes, yes. so I'm, so you found limits to the boundaries but but felt that somehow those limits could be expanded yes right gotcha yes so, yeah because <clears throat> I, I mean as you know the nature of a sphere changes of course as when, a new edge new person even enters it yeah, yeah. exactly mm. and and i thought this being the pinnacle sphere mm -hmm that the more who entered it and the more that we did or learned mm -hmm. or developed within ourselves, then we would be able, those boundaries that existed, I felt would, th there would be an expansion yeah. of the space within the sphere, for yeah. want of a better way of saying it. But you never approached the gate to the seventh sphere in that, in that no. state? No. No. In fact, it's as if it didn't exist before our conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that interesting in itself? It isn't is. It? I mean, I hadn't spent a long time studying the boundaries. No, I'd just been no. to the boundaries at different times. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, it, it's like it didn't exist to me before that point. Yeah. It's my awareness, obvious, my l lack of desire for that awareness. And have you visited now some of the gates? Are the gates into the seventh sphere from the sixth sphere? Yes. Yeah, so you can see there's many of such gates. Yes. And yeah, so yeah. it's really interesting in itself. It's, it's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. So now you're in the seventh sphere. You you no longer believe in an expanding seventh sphere aside from the same way that the sixth sphere expands, and that is by the influx of new additions. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, um, I my perception now is that. I cannot know the full scope of just what's in store. <laughs> have you I had much, I know you've had an overwhelming four, four weeks from our perspective, but yeah. have you had much time uh, to contemplate sort of, sort of things like how the universe is constructed while you're in the seventh sphere at this stage, or are there just too many other things going on? <laughs> I, I suppose that, um, and this is another thing that um, has changed for me, that when I was in the sixth sphere, We've already kind of established that I was, I was self-focused yeah. in terms of I felt I needed to attain things and achieve things internally, but also externally I had an interest and a fascination in the workings of things and the science of things and uh, how how from a very intellectual viewpoint. Now here in the seventh, you know, I felt sort of that the that the universe and knowledge was something to conquer when I was in the sixth sphere and something to be attained. And now here in the seventh, it's as if I feel I must... It, my focus has been a lot more on myself, but in a different way, if that makes sense, yeah. in, yeah. in this whole self-concept yeah. thing that I have to... Coming face to face with the fact that the psychological beliefs of your sixth sphere existence are very, very different to fact. Yes, yeah. and every way that I've perceived of myself up until now has, has been be very adjusted. flawed. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And also there's now this, uh, God exists. Mm -hmm. uh, God exists and this relationship with God is possible. And those two things feel far more important to me than the construction how the universe, the universe is, is constructed. constructed. Exactly. Yeah. It, it, something that sort of would have fascinated me a short while ago now seems... Almost mundane. <laughs> yes. And I feel like a child in many ways. It, sort of, I feel as if I've been deaf, dumb and blind, mm -hmm. really, in yeah. comparison to where I am now. And 
the potential for relationships. Mm. So not just relationship with God, but relationship with others. Mm. They're so it's so different mm. to to anything that I perceived of before that I just feel so much enjoyment mm. in in this new way of living that I haven't really considered much except that I feel that my perception of infinity is completely different now. Yeah, yeah. My conception of infinity in terms of time and space when I was in the sixth sphere uh, was one thing, mm. but now with all these new sensory experiences, I feel that it's almost as if the the nature of dimensional space is different mm -hmm. for me. Yeah. And so infinity must also be infinite in all these different dimensional things that I can hardly understand. Or imagine even. That yeah. I'm experiencing now. So mm. I can't even imagine yeah. what the truth is. Yeah. No, it's a very good way of describing it, I think. So um, I think it would be very interesting in our future to see how, you know, when yourself and and maybe Ariana, when she makes the transition into the eighth, uh, yeah. it'd be interesting to talk with you both about about that transition and 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 the differences between the seventh and the eighth uh, spheres. I would love to come and do that. Yeah. I I, yeah. I feel so humbled that it, you even anticipate that transition for me. In oh the future. no, it's <laughs> inevitable. <laughs> <laughs> and while I know that in one regard, it seems just such yeah. a, an immense honour to make such uh, to have such a closeness with. With my father, I suppose. Mm, yeah, it's wonderful, isn't it? Mm. And and that's why it's inevitable because you you will constantly be seeking to be closer, and mm. so that's why that sort of once you hit the seventh sphere, future progress is really in a lot of ways inevitable. It's sort of it's almost like will disappears yeah. <laughs> for the sake of desire. You yes, know what I mean? <laughs> yes. Well, <laughs> what a, what way a marvelous it. way to describe it. Yeah will disappears for the sake of desire. Yeah. Oh my goodness, that is so much of what I feel I'm experiencing. Yeah, mm. yeah, it's wonderful, isn't it? Mm. And yeah, that's how I probably would describe it, like mm. because because the will almost disappears now, desire is now the thing driving you, you know. <laughs> Once you know there's these possibilities that are infinite beyond you, why would you not seek mm. for them? It's a, and that was such a, that was so, I think I mentioned at the beginning of our discussion this this the way that desire seemed to seem to suddenly lead me into so much new experience mm. when I first made that crossing and so much <laughs> sensory and emotional and intellectual overload <laughs> overload all at once because of desire yeah. and and once I connected with God, it seemed to wake up so much desire in me and, yeah. and desire does seem to govern me now. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Well, it's been wonderful meeting you, Thank Sebastian, you. and it's been great. It's great that you came and talked with us the first time. My, my and, gratitude to you is immeasurable and yeah, I, I hope you understand the rewards. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you know, can you, feel the rewards of I don't what know if it, our spirit friends have told you much about our <laughs> process the, of the 14 who have returned here. I'm, and, I'm learning. But it's, uh, it's, it's a bit more of a complex process <laughs> in terms of, you know, coming face to face with certain things ourselves, of course. And, yeah, and but that, the, you know. the gift that you have given me, I will... I'm so grateful. Yeah. Nothing more than the gift God's given me, hey? Thank you, brother, and... and <laughs> take, love yourself, take care of yeah, yourself. Yeah, thank you. I, uh, I definitely need to do that. <laughs> and, um, yeah, it's lovely to have new friends, new, meet new friends, and I'm glad you've got a lot more new friends now too. Yeah. Um, and just friends that I... Friendships that I could not conceive of before now. Yeah, yeah, that's wonderful too, isn't it? So, you know, one of the things we've been trying to do um, through these mediumship sessions is help our brothers and sisters on Earth get some sort of a concept about the different spheres and what happens in the different spheres and the different changes that occur and so forth. So 
it's been really good that you've been able to come back and talk about that with us because it, it helps uh, our friends on Earth start to have a bit more faith about the possibilities. Mm. And as you know, once you know a possibility is there, yeah. it's very hard it's now hard to, not to... It's hard to ignore <laughs> to it. To ignore it. <laughs> not explore it a little bit. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I, I hope I can encourage them to explore this yeah. just incredible um, opportunity for a relationship with God. And, and Ariana is teaching me so much about how one doesn't need to spend all this labour and effort yeah, yeah. To, uh, to, to, to go it alone and to be so self-reliant. She, she, she formed this relationship with God so soon after she entered the spirit life compared yeah. to myself. And yeah. she has lived with the benefits and rewards of such a relationship for so long. Mm. And uh, it has guided her and assisted her in every new learning and growth, just as it does me now. Mm. And and a person need not wait it, <laughs> to to enter this life to to start that uh, to start that growth with God. Yeah, and I'd be very interested in our discussions in the future. You know, once about the transition to the next sphere, just to see how you feel about the absorption of your other half's feelings and emotions mm. and experiences because I, I know that that is something that you know most people on earth are, are can't sort of contemplate either mm. you know the whole f feeling that almost their experiences become your experiences mm. and and those kind of things you know something something to look forward to uh, for yourself but yes but you know as a person's going through it it's a, it's a good thing to try to describe how it feels and the different confronting parts of that mm. as well so that people get some kind of concept of what it's like to to sort of become firstly aware of your other half, but then to go through this process of joining with them. Mm. And, uh, and I feel that also would be an interesting uh, discussion to have yes. about those processes. Mm. Well, I'm happy to give it a go. <laughs> mm. Yeah, so what, what we're trying to do, actually, Mary and I have, you know, been for some time now trying to uh, work out a way that we can have conversations with spirits that sort of show, you know, what many people experience in the transition between death and, and mm. the first fear and then and even the earthbound state and then the first fear and then and then the transition between the first and second and so forth and what it's like transitioning these transitions if you're if you're you know, doing it the intellectual way like you've done it. Mm. And then what it's like doing it you know, emotionally, like Ariana's done it, mm. uh, and and tr contrasting that for people on Earth in a way that we can use the language here on Earth as much as possible to try and describe how that is and how that feels, and and the frustrations of it, mm. and, and 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 the different things that come about because of it, so that people can get an idea of the contrast between the two parts, mm -hmm. uh, because right. it's still something I feel not many people really understand. Yes, mm -hmm. and, and I hope today that I've been able to share some of the, the, the deep contrast that I've experienced between the sixth and seventh spheres, because really that is the difference the, um, between the, the natural and, and... And divine love paths, yeah. D divine paths. Yeah. And um, yes, yeah, so I, I hope that I can add to that project. Yeah. That no, I think it, I think our discussion today has helped people or will help people already just to see, you know, the difference between vibrant, you know, you're using words like vibrancy and passion and mm. things like that. When you compare that to uh, the sixth sphere state where the intellect is so dominant. And I think that's come across a lot already in our discussion. So hopefully that, you know, ha has also come across to our listeners who mm. are listening to our discussion. I wish that I could, uh, uh, show them pictures and project the my feelings <laughs> yeah. yes and into picture form yeah. uh, to show you yeah. what it's really like because it's uh, yeah. and that i wish the emo this new emotional quality that i this new sense as you call it that i could uh help others to experience the contrast between mm. what my senses were like in the sixth sphere as compared to now 
Yeah, but that's very hard, though, isn't mm, it? Because you, very, as I you know, know how to do that. <laughs> a person has to almost be in the state where you can transmit the emotions of the seventh mm. before they'll understand the seventh. Mm. And, and, and because that's not possible without being in the seventh, there's no need to do it once exactly. that happens. And so <laughs> it's, it's very hard to make these contrasts, except by uh, doing it in a, in a way that uses, I know words are not that descriptive, but if we can, if we can do that at least, then at yeah. least give some pe people a concept between the differences. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'd love to thank you for your time today. Thank you for coming back and having a chat with us about those things. And yeah, you mark the booking for the. Uh, I know. <laughs> I know your seven, seven, eight sphere transition is going to be even more mm -hmm. uh, sort of overwhelming than your seventh. Yeah. And so, you know, and obviously I it might barely, be a little time after the eight. Yes, <laughs> I barely feel like I've uh, completed the transition yes. to the seventh of course, as yet. So. Uh, but this but relation... I'm making a booking with you. Okay. you <laughs> knock on Mary's door, oh. <laughs> whether, we, whether we listen or not, it depends on what's going on. But I will. Yeah, if I you will. can knock on our door once you feel comfortable with, with the changes of the eighth. And, um, I will. And it'd be lovely to talk with both of you, both yourself and, and your soulmate as mm -hmm. well because I think it'd be great to get a bit of a, uh, you know, a contrasting opinions there. Not so much that they'll be contrasting, hey, but um, just so that both, both you get a feminine and a masculine perspective mm. of, the, of the transition. Mm. Mm. I would love to. Yeah, uh, yeah. It would be a small, a small thing I could do. <laughs> yeah, and, mm. I, and I think of, you know, we're still praying for your brother and, and brothers and sisters who listen to our conversation have yet to make the transition yes. and, and we're mindful of the fact that you know we're hopeful for them to do the same thing and i'm sure if they do they'll enjoy their lives more too <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah it's a wonderful thing thank you yeah. thank you again yeah. it's a p pleasure being talking to you and thanks for your time yeah. that has got to be one of the coolest channelings i've done for a long time for me personally <clears throat> to feel the to feel the contrast because I get I have the personal privilege of feeling that from him yeah what I just oh it was so beautiful yeah it's so yeah. beautiful yeah the, and because it's such a new experience too you know you can get the feeling of his entire excitement about the new experience <laughs> yeah, as well yeah. Can't you? So, yeah he's very much in the change yeah in the change and just Man, it's so beautiful. God's way is so beautiful. Mm. Mm. And his, his description of, of the two homes, to feel the difference is incredible. Yeah. And then the other thing was the difference in relationships. Yeah. This joy that he feels about every person. Every person as an individual. Mm. Oh, mm. It's so beautiful. Mm. Yeah. yeah. It's so beautiful. Yeah. No, it's wonderful that yeah. you could reflect some of those changes and we could have a conversation with him about the contrast, you know. Yeah. Uh, that's really yeah. good to be able to do that. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm hopeful that our listeners have enjoyed the two different versions of Sebastian, mm. really, because the first, you know, four weeks ago when we talked to him first, it was. Uh, quite a different man who came to talk with us, wasn't it? Yeah. And, and to feel the difference between him then and now yeah. is quite a significant difference. It and and, yeah. and it sort of in, in itself illustrates the difference between the sixth and the seventh spheres. Mm. Mm. So I feel that's really good. Mm. Mm. <laughs> yeah, thanks for doing that for us. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, thanks, Sebastian. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, we'll see, see you later to our audience and, and uh, hopefully you enjoyed that channeling and maybe you learnt some few th a few things from it as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll catch you later.